Hey everybody, today I'm taking a look at three abstract strategy board games. And from the title of the video, you're probably aware that I'm a big fan of each of these. So spoiler alert, they are all very good. Now the games I'm talking about are Framework by Uwe Rosenberg. I'm also taking a look at Chin and Ingenious by Dr. Reiner Knizia. Now before I get started on these reviews, I want to give a shout out to the show sponsor, kienda.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer. And if you use the link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. Okay, so let's start with Ingenious, which is certainly the lightest of the three, or at least the most family-friendly of the three in terms of strategy and decisions. Um, this one accommodates two to four players and takes around 30 to 45 minutes to play. Now you're gonna be playing on this big kind of board here with these hexes. And depending on the player count, um, certain zones are gonna be eligible or ineligible. So basically, if you're playing a two player game, you can only play in the white zone. In a three player game, you can go in this kind of light gray zone. And if you're playing a four player game, the grid is gonna become bigger again by using this kind of outer area here. Now the turn structure in this game is very simple where all you're going to be doing is you're going to be selecting one of the six tiles on your little um, rack here which have been drawn randomly from a large bag of tiles here and you're going to place them on the board. Now I've progressed the game a little bit here by placing more of these tiles down because you can see only a, there's only a few starting spots on the board to begin with. Now what you're trying to do essentially is you are trying to create chains of the same color um, or pattern if you're colorblind like I am. Um, so for example, without putting too much thought into this, I might want to select um, this one here and I might want to place it like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a look at every matching symbol coming off from the tiles that I've just placed in each direction. Now in this example, it's not gonna to be too much where this one is gonna have one coming off here, which matches. And this one's gonna have one, two, three coming off there, because again, you go in each direction for a total of four points in this particular color. Then what you'll do is you'll use this little um, tracker here to track how many points you have in each of the corresponding categories. So you can see here, I placed the orange one, therefore I would put a little peg, which do come included, but I've been lazy here, and move it up to the four spot. Now, the idea here is at the end of the game, once the entire grid is filled up and no more tiles can be placed, your lowest category out of the six different shapes will be your final score. So it does have this classic Knitian scoring where you want to keep them all as balanced as possible. Because again, you can do great in four or five of the different categories, but if one of them is falling behind, then um, that's going to be your final score and the rest of it is just wasted effort. And I really love um, that scoring system that Reiner Knizia has made um, so popular. Now there is a slight different incentive here to um, kind of um, go a bit more tunnel vision in a certain color, because if you ever reach them right to the top, which will happen, um, you will get a back-to-back -back turn, which can be great because it will let you seize some opportunities on the board because as you can probably imagine um, when you um, start building these chains you are naturally going to be creating opportunities for other players because you know if you create a long run of say you know five shapes it's only going to take one person to sneak in after you to create that chain of six shapes so sometimes you might want to get ahead a little bit and then tr start trying to break that pattern um, and stop people piggybacking off your previous efforts. But it's extremely accessible and very easy to play, set up and just get going really. And um, plays in a nice amount of time. Um, it does really start to um, swallow the board up as you start playing and you will um, yeah, quickly find yourself under pressure to boost up your, you know, your worst category on your sheet here, which is a really nice thing to do, um, or a nice thing to manage, um, I suppose. So yeah, this is a lovely family weight um, game that um, I would highly recommend. You know, 30 minutes is a, a real sweet spot for this one. Um, get some decent decisions, not paralyzing, but some decent ones nonetheless. And um, some nice tactility if you've got the little plastic tiles here. And it's just very minimalist and just pleasant to play. And I'm sure it'll be a welcome addition to almost anybody's collection. And certainly you can play with um, children and they're going to understand what they're doing here. So yeah, I highly recommend um, Ingenious. Um, it's a strong recommendation from me. And would certainly deserve a chairman's commendation. And it has that kind of timeless classic energy um, to this one. So that is Ingenious. Um, definitely a recommendation. 
Next up, let's take a look at Uwe Rosenberg's Framework. Now, Framework is a one to four player game that takes around 30 minutes to play um, on average. Now, if you're familiar with games such as Nova Luna or Sigani, um, this one is 80%, maybe even 90% similar um, to those. But this one, you are essentially placing these square tiles in your own personal tableau and you're trying to pattern them out to achieve as many objectives as possible. So you can see that each of these tiles in the center, you have a particular objective. Like in this example, it says this tile wants to be next to four of the silver rings here. So this one, it's got two here, it's got one here, and it's actually got one here. And this is fine, and this objective would actually be achieved um, because you can chain the um, certain tiles you need through other ones. So they don't need to be directly next to the requirement on the tile itself. And as you can imagine, um, as you build up this network or framework of tiles, the combos you can pull off are extremely satisfying as um, you know, you can um, achieve several objectives at once and be working towards multiple goals at the same time, which is you know a very nice puzzle to try and manage. Now, the main difference between this one and Nova Luna, which is the only one I've played, I've not played Sagani, is the drafting system um, itself. So if you remember in Nova Luna, it would use a time track system, um, kind of uh, made popular in games like patchwork where certain tiles would have more time on them which mean you'd move further along the track and it'd be longer before you got another turn. This game has done away with that and it's gone back to kind of bare bones drafting where you'll draw a number of tiles plus one equal to the number of players and then in turn order you'll just pick the tile you want and I believe the first player will get the remaining tile as well. So much more similar to a game like Acropolis if you're familiar with that one. It's a much punchier system. Um, maybe, you know, a little bit more random, I suppose, with what you're left with. Um, and it, but it does make it move at a lot brisker pace, which I actually think is a welcome um, addition. Now, the other thing that's improved here for me is that potential to create those longer, um, more impressive chains or networks because some of the objectives here um, are slightly amplified and there's sometimes you need a certain objectives before other objectives. Sometimes you can have a hybrid of requirements and you can see here that um, a lot of the uh, tiles themselves have multiple different um, categories on them rather than just the one like in the original uh, Nova Luna, which again, I think is all a plus. So um, yeah, I love the original Nova Luna and this one has just made it better for me. So um, just yeah, more of the same, but a slight few tweaks which have actually made it better. Now, my only complaint about this one is that the visuals aren't quite as pleasant as Nova Luna. I think Nova Luna did pop a lot more on the table. It's a lot brighter and more aesthetically pleasing. Well, this one is a bit more drab looking and me being colorblind, um, I cannot quite look at a glance and see all the different colors as quickly as I could with Nova Luna, but that is, that's a personal thing. And um, it's, it's only a couple of the categories that are a little bit more blurred for me and will take me you know, half a second to differentiate them. Um, but still, this is such a fantastic game. Um, again, very satisfying um, to um, tick off all those different objectives. And that race element still comes through so strongly because I didn't mention that the actual winning criteria here is to be the first person to achieve a certain amount of objectives and shed all of those tokens. Um, just, it's a fantastic game. It's probably, or is in fact, definitely my favorite Uwe Rosenberg game. And um, yeah, I, I would play this one anytime, um, anywhere. I think it's that good. So that is Framework by Uwe Rosenberg. And the final game I'm talking about today, which is in fact my favorites by quite a large margin actually, which is saying something because I really do enjoy Ingenious and Framework. Uh, this is Chin, um, another game by Reiner. Knizia, two to four players, 20 to 30 minutes to play. So a very um, quick game here. But this is almost like a Domino's um, variant where a bit like a framework, you are racing to shed your player pieces, which in this game is these pagodas. Now, what you're doing is you are placing these domino shaped tiles on this rather large board. And basically, if you ever create um, a group of two, you will place one of your pagodas down on there, showing that you are controlling that particular region. However, if they are ever smaller than five inside, then they are vulnerable to be taken by other players, um, by, by other players, if they end up encroaching on those areas 
with their regions and they can end up absorbing it all for their color. And as soon as it becomes five or bigger in size, in size then you will place another pagoda on top, obviously giving you um, another pagoda to get rid of, but it'll also make that um, particular zone um, invulnerable to be taken by other players. And of course, as you spread that on the map, you might start engulfing other regions um, and, uh, and absorbing those as well. Now also spread out on the map, there are these towns and cities where if you end up connecting your chains to them, if you are the um, the majority player, as in as in if you have the most regions or the most pagodas touching that particular town, then you'll also shed another pagoda, um, showing that you control that town as well, which is always a back and forth with the other players because they're doing the same thing here. And um, what a wonderful flow this game has, just constantly just smashing down tiles, drawing up a new one, you know, no rules, ambiguities, no fiddliness, um, just pure, um, simple fun, and still some real cool tactical decisions um, to be made here. Um, another one of those games where you have to be careful with the opportunities you're leaving to other players. And you know, generally speaking, this game does level out and you um, will generally come down to quite fine margins between who wins and who doesn't. Um, but it's those micro decisions, those small errors, which will separate the, um, the winners and the losers here. Now, the only, I'm not going to call it a nitpick, but it's something that could maybe rub you the wrong way here, is the luck of the tile draws, um, because you are randomly drawing these tiles into your hands. And of course, sometimes they're going to be more suitable than others. Um, and like a lot of the time you get these double tiles, which are generally strong, and because it'll instantly let you put a pagoda down, and it will let you, um, you know, very quickly increase your existing regions on the board. Um, but you know, I have had people utilize the two different size tiles very effectively by connecting multiple regions together. Um, so you know, maybe sometimes you need to be prepared that the tiles might not fall in your favor. Uh, but again, that's not that's not a problem for me, but um, this is quite a deterministic abstract game. You might That might rub you the wrong way, but I'm willing to um, forsake that for the sake of just ease of play and I'm um, just kind of rolling with the punches, I suppose. Um, but this one is one of my favorite games that I have played this year. Um, definitely in the top two or three, that's how much I rate this one. Um, and it's one of those games where when I played it, I was like, well, that was just, that was just a real throwback. It was very enjoyable. And I would play this one back to back, back to back. And I did that, you know, when I got this one first, I was hitting the table consistently and it still is um, because I've not really met a player who hasn't enjoyed this one, whether that be um, someone brand new to the hobby or whether that be someone who's played tons and tons of games. They're, they're all going to find something to appreciate here because there really isn't anything I can fault. I mean, again, apart from that subject or um, yeah, that subjective luck of the tile draw. Um, but yeah, this game is um, absolutely brilliant. It, it's one of the best games I've played, to be honest. It's that good. Now, sadly, it is currently out of print, so it might be quite hard to get a copy um, of this one. Um, but much like most of, um, you know, Knizia's back catalogue, I'm sure one day it will come around and get a reprint um, and be available again. But if you can find a copy out there in the wild, then I would highly recommend um, picking this one up because it is an absolute joy to play. And um, yeah, I, I love it so, so much. So that is Chin um, by Rainer Knizia. So there we go, that concludes uh, the video. Um, it's been very enjoyable talking about three games from my personal collection that I truly love and adore. So um, yeah, very nice uh, to do that. And generally speaking on the channel over the years, I've said that abstract strategy games generally aren't my thing. But um, after playing so many great ones recently, um, I'm starting to think that maybe I just was not playing the right ones. And maybe I am a big fan of abstract strategy games after all. Uh, but if you have enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other content. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye-bye.